Well, hello. My name is Dawn Otten Sweeney. I am a national sales director with Mary Kay Cosmetics, and I am really excited that you've decided to join us for boot camp. Um, boot camp. Mary Kay style, that is. So um, hopefully this is going to be more fun than a physical boot camp would be, but really um, I'm hoping that it has the same effect on you that a physical boot camp would have. You know, boot camps for personal trainers have gotten to be really popular. Boot camps for weddings, boot camps um, to get you ready for different occasions physically. Obviously, army boot camps. It's a preparation. Um, preparation time for you to get ready for something that you're looking forward to or something that's going to help you with your future. Um, I'm hoping the Mary Kay Boot Camp does that exact thing. Um, I decided that the only thing that was holding back um, the majority of the consultants in my area was their lack of skill in the fundamentals of our business. I really believe that if someone becomes skilled at the skincare class. And when I say the skincare class, it means more than just going and reading your flip chart. Um, the skincare class, when I am talking about that fundamental skill, I'm talking about getting leads so you have someone to ask to book a skincare class. I'm talking about managing your money that you get from a skincare class. I'm talking about um, booking from your bookings and pre profiling and coaching um, the guest and the hostess. I'm talking about the skincare class procedure. I'm talking about optional props um, and tools that you may be using at your skincare class in addition to what is featured in your flip chart. I'm talking about the four point recruiting plan being solidly used at every facial and class and then closing the class um, to not only um, maximize sales in sets, but also um, rebooking that advanced color appointment um, and um, picking out one or two people who you'd most like to do business with. So when I say skincare class, that means a lot more than just going there, reading the flip chart and selling products. I grew up in a time, I've been building my Mary Kay business now for 23 years. So at um, the time that I'm taping this, we are in June of 2009. Um, but honestly, the skills that um, I'm going to be sharing with you, I learned early on in my business, in the first 24 months of my business. And honestly, they've served me very well and I've built the foundation of my whole national area on those early learned skills. Um, I grew up in the Debbie Moore unit and area and that meant that we came from Daily and White which means that we came from um, the first Mary Kay Beauty Consultant, Director, and National. And I was taught by Daylene White, by Mary Kay herself, by Debbie Moore, Kathy Hallou, that the foundation of a Mary Kay business is the skincare class. There's, n there's no way around it. And in my 23 years, I have seen people try to find a way around it, um, make a way around it. But I will tell you that we always come full circle back to the skincare class being the basis of the business. And so if you want to build the most solid foundation that you don't ever have to go back and fill in the cracks in the foundation of your business, then and if you will learn the skills that are being taught during this boot camp to the point that you own them, and learning the skills is going to require more than listening to these CDs. It, it requires more than going to a weekly success meeting or going to, you know, seminar, follow tree, career conference. It requires activity. And you... You learn, and then you do activity, and then you re-listen, and you do the activity again. You re-listen, you do the activity again, until you come to the point that you own the information. When I say own the information, um, I want you to picture there you do something in your life that you own. For instance, it may be a recipe that you make on a regular basis. You don't even have to look at the recipe card anymore. It may be your other job that you've done. It may be in parenting now. It may be um, 
you know, tying a shoe, riding a bike, things that you don't have to think about any longer. You just do them. These boot camp skills, skincare class skills, core Mary Kay skills can become the same way. A uh, concerning um, trend I'm seeing in Mary Kay, and one reason that I put this training together and have been doing this on a weekly basis with some local consultants and then committed to getting this taped so that it can um, be accessible to how, whoever wants it and needs it um, is because I see a trend of even though we have more information available to us than we've ever had, I feel like we have um, consultants who own far less skill um, than they did when we didn't have an internet, <laughs> when we didn't have conference calls, when we didn't have unit net, and we didn't have in touch. Because back in the day, we had to learn our business from being given a dialogue and then doing it and then coaching it, being coached by our director, coming back to a weekly success meeting, going back out there and doing it. Now there's so many ideas out there that you never master any one of them. So, you know, if we're talking about getting leads, you know that when you're out, you know, maybe you're on a field trip with your daughter's, you know, third grade class, or maybe you're at your other job and you're at lunch, and an opportunity arises, and you really want to talk to this woman about Mary Kay. You want to offer a facial. Maybe you think she'd be great at the business. Maybe she's voicing a need that our business could offer her. In your mind, you have a million ideas of what you could do. You could give her time-wise samples. You could give her a lipstick bubble. You could um, give her a skincare survey. You could um, ask her to be a face model for you at an event you have going on. You could la, la, la. I mean, fill in the blanks. You have 20 different options. By the time you go through all those options in your mind, the opportunity's probably passed or you've chickened out, and then you're kicking yourself that you didn't do something about that and take advantage of that opportunity. And then you go into the I, I should have, would have, could have scenarios, which don't usually serve any of us very well. You have so many different ways of booking classes, hostess credits, getting leads, closing the class, doing the class, that People don't do well with so many choices, they actually do less. And so there's, there's so many choices out there that I don't think anyone does anything for long enough to own it. And so I think a lot of our consultants are like gerbils on wheels. They're busy being busy and they have all these ideas, and, but they're not moving forward in their business. So what my goal is, purpose of this training is, is it's for sure not to say that there's just one way um, to get leads. There's not just one way to coach the hostess and, and offer hostess options. What I'm going to do is share with you what's worked for me, various options that have worked well in my area, and then I'm going to encourage you, if you're doing something now that works, stick with it. If what you're doing now isn't working or you're not doing anything, so you need to pick something, then start doing it. And after you do a power start, 30 faces with it, then you reevaluate. Once you have picked how you're going to get leads, um, for instance, with people that you're going to see on a repetitive basis, you don't change it. For instance, when we get to that um, session of getting leads, um, I'm going to share with you how I get leads with people I know, and we'll see on a repetitive basis. How do I um, ask someone to try the product that I may not see again? How do I turn that into a class? I use the same dialogue now as a national sales director in those scenarios as I did 23 years ago, 22 years ago, 21 years ago, 20 years ago. So I don't have to, if someone, you know, sends an email idea and says they got 5,000 leads doing this, it, it doesn't matter. I don't need to change my technique because what I'm doing is working to achieve the goals that I have. So I guess what I'm saying is more is not always better. What I'm hoping that I can do through this series is help you um, simplify your the core skills of your business that are necessary to move your business forward. And so at the end of this, I really want to be able to say to you, now 
<laughs> this is what I want to say, and this is what I will say to you at the end of this, is that now the only thing that's holding you back is the number of new faces that you're willing to put the products on. Because there's no more training that you can get that's going to make a difference until you decide to change the activity level that you're willing to do. Um, I am going to ask you to get maximum benefit. You know, you've invested in um, this training time together to get maximum benefit. I want you to pick an activity goal to do along with this boot camp. Um, I taught the boot camp one session a week. So I'm going to encourage you to only do one session a week and feel free to listen to it multiple times during that week, but only don't race through <laughs> because it's far too much information. Another thing I, I see as a concerning trend is that new consultants will go to an hour, two hour, three hours of new consultant training and think, okay, I'm set. I, you know, I know what I need to do. And they do a perfect start or a power start, and they think they're set. To be honest with you, prior to doing your first power start, which is 30 faces, and that 30 faces you can do individually. You can do it in classes of five, so that would be six classes of five. It could be five classes of six. It could be ten classes of three. However you want to mix it up, 30 faces in a month's time frame is a power start. I am going to encourage you to do as many skincare classes as possible because from skincare classes you're going to be able to use all the skills that I'm sharing with you and it's far easier to book classes from classes than it is classes from facials. But obviously if you are scared to do classes or you're not going to get started ever if you have to do a class versus a facial, then do a facial. I did do a lot more single and double appointments at the beginning of my business because I was really shy and intimidated and I felt more comfortable with one or two people than I did groups of four to six. And that's fine. I still put the products on 30 faces in a month. I just had to do more appointments because of that. So the sooner we can get you to the point that you're doing classes versus single and double appointments, the better. Um, you will maximize your time that way. And if there's any seasoned consultants out there that are saying in their mind, um, well, but I can make more per person when I do one or two people than when I do a class. I, I want to give you a, a different perspective on that. Um, you may make more money now, but you're losing money in the future. So if you sell $200 to one person versus $50 a person to four people, but you've gotten to share this opportunity with four people and you've gotten to book one or two of those people at least from the four, so you have another class booked from it, then you were far better off to sell 200 to four people at a class and book future classes and be able to do everything I'm going to share with you during this boot camp than you were to sell 200 to that one person. And when one person sits down with you and buys 200, the likelihood of her having a class for you, I have found over the years, is not super high. She's had your undivided attention. She bought everything that she wanted. And you're, it, it's kind of a dead end. It's a you know, like a perfect start, perfect stop. So I have to disagree. You are not making more per person. Um, in the short run you are, but not over the long run because those four people, you know, half of them on skincare, two people on skincare over a year order one on skincare no matter how much they ordered at their first appointment. So I'm encouraging you, you to have a, a a big perspective on this, a long-term perspective. Also, too, if you're listening to this and you desire to build a unit, a car team, a national area. Um, I will tell you that, you know, 2% of all consultants become directors. And, and that's by choice, you know, not by um, ability. It's a choice if you want to be in a leadership position with Mary Kay or not. Um, I believe that anyone who wants to can, you just have to be willing to walk it out and be coached through it and do the work through it. Um, but if 2%, if you are building a car team or a unit or a national area 
and 2% of those people are going to become directors, then 98% of them, you want selling products. You want selling skincare. You want them doing skincare classes. Um, also, too, you yourself, you want to be doing skincare classes because if you've done any team building at all, you will have noticed that if someone is at a skincare class and starts her Mary Kay business, she generally tends to book skincare classes. If someone signed up at an event, they will tend to tend towards building their business through events. And if someone had a facial and that's how she is introduced to the product and the business, then that is how she will tend to build her business. It doesn't matter how people come in, but everyone needs to get to the point where they acknowledge and build their business on skincare classes. Um, unless, of course, you know, they have a lot of time to invest into their business and they are not looking for the most time efficient way to get from point A to point C. You know, it, something that is always fascinating to me is how um, especially in this economy with the Dave Ramsey debt-free living um, phase, which I think is awesome, um, how conscientious people will be with their money. But then they will not be conscientious at all with their time. And time is a much more precious commodity than money because it's finite. It's limited. You only have so much time. But in this universe, there is more than enough money to do anything that God needs you to do with it. So um, our time actually is something that we need to be as conscientious with as our money. And um, holding skincare classes and building your business on skincare classes is the best way to be a good steward of your time. Also, too, how I look at it is the longer I'm in this, the more I value Mary Kay's wisdom. And if Mary Kay Ash thought that the best way to build a Mary Kay business was through individual or single appointments, she would have based our marketing plan on that. And she didn't. And I have been in Mary Kay long enough to see this pendulum swing back and forth. When I came in in the late 80s, it was all about the skincare class. I, I didn't know that there was any different way to build a Mary Kay business. I was taught that a Mary Kay business is you book your perfect start, and then from your perfect start, you book your power start, and you moved up the career path according to how many skincare classes you did. Then we started to go through a season of on the nose, on the toes, on the go, on the web, all these different options of selling products which are wonderful and great and can increase sales, but they're not the foundation for a Mary Kay business. They are extra. They are um, just like when you're at a skincare class. As skincare consultants, I really believe that we are not being professional skincare consultants with total integrity and ethics if we are not emphasizing the skin care as the mainstay of a woman's program. We can make as much money now selling microdermabrasion and even skin essence and uh, targeted action line reducer, which are all awesome products. I use them. I love them. I'm grateful for them. But that we can make as much money selling those things as we can skincare, but the skincare is what's going to make the difference to her. You know, I look at it this way. It's kind of like if I go to a dentist and they're not like drilling into my head, flossing and brushing and flossing and brushing, I'm, I'm kind of weary. You know, there's dentists now that I have met that they don't really talk that much about the brushing and the flossing. It's about the lumineers and the bleaching. And, you know, that's awesome. You're going to have super white teeth. They may fall out of your head, but they'll be white when they fall out. You know, that is the same thing with us. I mean, your skin's going to be even, but you're not cleansing, exfoliating, toning, moisture balancing, and protecting on a daily basis. You can't play catch up with what our environment does on a you know, daily basis without using the skincare. So the same thing with our business. You can make money um, doing all those other you know, extra ways of making money in your business, trunk shows and, um, and gift um, giving and, you know, all the other selling ideas that you get. <laughs> but, you know, what I am teaching my consultants, I'm going to encourage you to look at, if you're a consultant in this business to solely make money 
And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that Mary Kay wanted all of us to make money with this. Then you can take advantage of any selling idea that comes across the pike. But if you're looking at having a reorder business, basic skincare is the only way to go. Um, and if you're looking at being a career path consultant, that means someone who is wanting to be in a red jacket, earn a car, become a sales director, um, earn a Cadillac, build a national area, then honestly, you have no business doing 12 days of Christmas baskets that take, you know, a half an hour, an hour put together. You need to focus on holiday makeovers and developing a skincare clientele during the holiday season. You can sell Christmas gifts at those appointments if you, you know, they need help with that. But at the end of December, I want you to have 30 holiday face models in your portfolio versus selling, you know, thousands of dollars to men in 12 days of Christmas baskets that give you no reorder business possibly come January and have, you know, given you no new recruit prospects and no ability to impact and enrich lives through this opportunity. So um, that is just, you know, something you may want to use as a filter as ideas come to you at your unit meetings, as ideas come to you across the internet, email, unit net sites, um, in touch. Make sure that the idea, first off, you need it, because again, once we go through the boot camp, you're going to know what you need and what you don't, and once you own a skill, you don't need any more skills. I don't need anyone else to tell me how to coach a skincare class. I don't need them to tell me how to host, do hostess credit, or to rebook from classes, or how to do the four-part recruiting plan. I don't need any other ideas than that. I'm set. I've, you know, I can, you know do all those things, you know, with a level of mastery and own it um, so I can focus on other parts of this business. So when those ideas come that you don't need um, or aren't congruent to what your goals are in your business, then I encourage you to tune them out. I mean, that, that is a necessity in our information age that we have. You, you have far more ideas and information in your Mary Kay business than you need and will ever need. So... Um, I am hoping that this helps you um, have a better filter system so you know what to take in and what to filter out when you're at events and training. Also, too, um, the activity that I was talking about, I want you to pick an activity um, that you're going to do um, while this boot camp is going on. There is going to be eight sessions, and so I'm encouraging you to take eight weeks to go through this, but know that it's going to take you a year to become a master at this, putting the products on 30 faces a month for 12 consecutive months. You know, I, I hope you'll find the time to do that. And, and that's not a full-time job. 30 faces in a month, again, five well-coached classes of six people, you guys, that's 10 hours of work. That could be, you know, three to four hours a week, or you could do that all in one week if you want to and not work the next three. It's up to you. I don't know your schedule and your life. You do. But if you will commit to that, you're going to have a really nice cash flow. You know, from 30 faces, you know, you're going to sell at least $1,000 of the product. You know, that's an extra $500 cash profit into your budget. It could be double or triple that. It's going to depend on your target market and how effective you are. You're going to become more effective as you go along. Also, too, you know, you're going to have at least 100 new skincare customers. You know, if you're putting the price on 30 faces, at the end of a month, you're going to have at least 10 new skincare customers. Don't you agree? At the end of a year, you're going to have 100 to 120 skincare customers. A skincare customer orders, what, $150 worth of product a year minimum? 150 times 100? You guys, that's $15,000 in retail sales. Half of that, $7,500 in profit. That's great extra money that you've just generated for your family your second year by, you know, being diligent about putting this product on 30 faces a month. Um, through the activity, though, I think, you know, we have set consultants up to be frustrated thinking that after your first power start, you can own all these skills. I mean, literally, it's, we're going to go through eight sessions of pulling this apart. And on the other side of this, you're going to go, oh, there is a lot. Holy crow, there's a lot to the skincare class, a lot more than I thought. Um, it is totally unrealistic to think that you can own all this. After your first 30 faces, you just, you just know what you don't know. 
You've just figured out what you don't know. Prior to that, you don't even know what you don't know. After the first 30 faces, you know what you don't know, and then I'm going to encourage you, start going through, you know, week by week by week um, in the boot camp and getting these things down pat. It, you may want to stall out for two weeks at one of the sessions and, you know, get more faces under your belt because you're finding that, you know, you need to work more on that skill. But I'm encouraging you, you're going to do all of this. You're going to book, coach, sell, and recruit through each power start that you do, through each set of 30 faces, but you're going to focus on one skill. So you'll still do the other things, just like we have new consultants reading through your flip chart. Really, everything's in your flip chart, so just read that. But you're going in focusing on maybe rebooking from the class until you get that down pat um, or focusing on coaching the hostess, but you're still doing the classes. Hopefully, this is making sense to you. So I want you to, to get maximum benefit. Activity needs to go along with the eight-week training sessions. Um, you pick that, and I want you to tell your director, give her a call and saying, okay, I'm putting myself through a Mary Kay boot camp, and this is the activity that, you know, I, I, you can hold me accountable to, that I am committing to. You know, it, are you going to do a perfect start? Um, and, and some of you may want to do, you know, a perfect start um, one month, which is 15 faces. Do five. I want you to do interviews along with it. So if you're doing a perfect start, do five interviews. Maybe it's a power start and do 10 interviews. Um, so maybe you're doing two months back-to-back -back power starts, two months back-to-back perfect starts. You know, five interviews with the perfect start activity level, 10 interviews with the power start activity level. You pick it. If you want to earn a car, become a director, then the 30 faces is non-negotiable. You know, it's at least 30 faces. So I want you to let your director know what activity level are you going to do while you're doing the boot camp training? How are you going to track it? You know, you pick. How are you going to track it? You can go on to my unit net site. Anything that I refer to, any of the handouts, training information, you can either find on Mary Kay in Touch or on my website. My website is at unitnet, www.unitnet.com forward slash D as in Dawn. So D-O-T-T-E-N hyphen Sweeney. S-W-E-E-N-E-Y. How are you going to track your activity? Um, I'm assuming that you're all going to use a weekly um, plan sheet and a weekly summary sheet. You know, those are, again, you know, there's some things that are non-negotiable in our business. You're going to hear me use that term frequently. My kids, always, they, they know, they've grown up. That's non-negotiable <laughs> or unacceptable. Those are two things that we talk about a lot. Um, but a weekly summary sheet you do online so that you're, you tell your director what activity level you're going to be doing um, with your boot camp assignments. There are going to be assignments, too, that you're going to be given as we go through this. Um, and the weekly summary sheet is going to show her. You do that online with her. It's going to tell her what you're doing. The weekly plan sheet is your job description. So you can plan out, you know, look in your date book right now. If you're committing to doing a perfect start, five classes, a power start, 10 classes, or your 15 phases, your 30, highlight in the next 30 days, when are you going to do it around your schedule? So that when you are making your booking phone calls, you know what options to give them so that, you know, you are, you know, controlling your business versus your business controlling you. So how are you going to track it? Um, you know, what type of um, activity tracking sheets are you going to use? The weekly summary sheet and the weekly plan sheets are non-negotiable. I want to give you guys a little scenario because what I have found is that I have been very willing to um, work hard at the early stages of my business because I was told and I believed it to be true that this business got easier. And I have found that to be true. The hardest part of this business is really, you know, learning this booking, coaching, selling, recruiting, and doing these 12 consecutive months of power starts. My first um, year in Mary Kay, I did Queen's Court of Sales. The second year, Queen's Court of Sharing. At the end of Queen's Court of Sales, earned my car. 
Um, and then the Queen's Court of Sharing Year um, became a director and picked up a Cadillac nine months later. Um, then as a new director, my first year as a director, we did 450,000 in retail sales, and then half million the next year, and then 650, and then after that earned 12 trips with Mary Kay, um, had two million dollar years, and have been a national now for five years. But I was willing to work harder at those earlier years in my business because I knew then it would get easier because once you own this, you own it. Um, but I was willing to work hard because I understood how we made our money. I understood this marketing plan. So, you know, I, I want to give you guys an assignment. If you have never printed off the advanced brochure on Mary Kay In Touch, go to In Touch, look into resources. I think it's under there. It's called advanced brochure. It is. It tells you how you make your money. I'm going to go over a little scenario with you, but all this information is on there. You need to know how we make our money. Um, as you're going through these power starts. Know that you may be a director going through these power starts. You may be a consultant. Honestly, I spend as much time with my directors on these skills as I do consultants working to earn cars and become directors. And that's fine. You know, if you're moving fast through the business, obviously someone who, you know, becomes a sales director in a matter of six months, they haven't even been in a year yet. They haven't mastered all these skills. And, you know, the company is going to pay you as a director, even though you're learning how to book, coach, sell, and recruit, you get to pick how much money do you want to make while you're learning these skills. That's totally up to you. I'm hoping that you're in a place where you can take some notes, otherwise you can re-listen to this, but you know, the number of new faces um, and the consistency is going to determine how fast you learn and own this information, and the number of new people that you share the business information with is going to determine how much money you make while learning this information. Let me give you some numbers to back this up. So listen to what I said again. The numbers of new faces and consistency will determine how fast you learn and own the information I'm sharing with you. The number of people you share the business information with is going to determine how much you make while learning these boot camp skills. So let me give you a scenario. If you sell $1,000 in a month, which, you know, that's, you could do that in a couple classes nowadays, but you sell $1,000 in product, you make $500 profit. You times that by 12 months, you make $6,000. Let's say you sell $1,000 and you have five team members who each sell $1,000. That's $5,000 in retail sales from them. They order half of that. That's $2,500 in team production. You make a 13% team check. That's $325 commission check. Plus your $500 for your profit from your $1,000. So you made $825 for that month times by 12 months. That's $9,900. So let's say $10,000 profit. So you could sell $1,000 and make just $500 profit, or you can sell $1,000 and have five team members who your director is training and have $10,000 profit. Let's say you sell $1,000 and you have 12 team members. You decide you want to take advantage of that new Chevy Malibu car. So your team has at least $4,000 in production, so you have a $520 um, commission check, 13% check. $500 profit still from selling your own $1,000. So that $1,000 that you sold, $500 profit plus your $520 commission check is $1,020. Plus, you know, obviously you're getting $50 bonuses for qualified recruits once you're a red jacket and beyond. And if you don't want the car, you can take cash. So I was adding cash on to that $1,020. Um, so that made $13.95 um, check for the month. You times that by 12 months, and you have $16,740. So again, you're still selling the same amount of product, but you have 12 team members and a free car or cash compensation. You make $16,740 for that 10 to 15 hours a week, depending on how proficient you are. 
Now let's say that you're a sales director. You sell the same $1,000. You have your $500 profit. You have 30 plus people that the company now pays you to train. And I'm going to assume that your unit, if a car team of 12 can do 4,000, I'm going to assume that a unit of 30 can do 8,000. Half would be your personal team at least. So 13% on your 4,000 is 520, $520. 13% on your 8,000, your unit production is $1,040. As a director, you get an $800 volume bonus for your unit doing 8,000 in production. Directors earn a $100 recruiting bonus for each personal qualified team member in a month. So that would be three, I'm assuming that the director had three new personal qualified team members. That was $300. And then still your sales. You still made your $500 profit from your $1,000 sales. So that's $3,060 times 12 months is $36,720 for the year. And I've kicked you up to 20 to 25 hours a week because I'm assuming you're spending half the time as a consultant and half the time as a director. And you still have your car. You could now be working at the Equinox level or the Camry level. Um, or you could be taking the cash option for that, which would be another $500. So I didn't even filter that in. I mean, that would be another, um, what, 6000 for the year. So that would take you to... 42,000 a year, which is what we say is an average for a director working 20 to 25 hours a week, 42,000 a year. So that would be probably 10 hours as a consultant, 10 hours as a director. So you get to decide, you know, how, how do you want to be paid um, from Mary Kay while you are learning these skills? You know, do you want to make 6,000 a year? Do you want to make 10,000 a year? Do you want to make, you know, 16 to 17,000 a year? Or do you want to make, you know, 36 to 42,000 dollars a year? All of these are still 25 hour or less a week jobs. And they actually the first two scenarios are, you know, less than 10 hours a month jobs. So that's up to you. While you're going through boot camp, you know, that might be something that you want to decide as you're going through. And do know that you can have 30 team members and you don't have to be a sales director. Your director will be more than happy to train them. You can still be getting a 13% commission check on 30 people on your team, selling your 1000 a month, and um, have um, your team members be trained by your director. She is more than fine with that. So you guys, that gives you an overview of what you can expect. Um, again, your assignment is to pick the activity level that you're going to be doing over the next eight weeks while you're doing your boot camp training and um, let your director know that. You need to pick out how you're going to track this activity. Um, I want you to commit to doing a weekly summary sheet and a weekly plan sheet. And those, you can pull both of those off of Mary Kay in touch. So this is actually the conclusion of your first session of the boot camp. Um, the next session, we're going to be working on um, getting leads um, into your business. Um, actually, what I want to touch on right now is some money management. Because um, what I have found with consultants is um, probably one of the most common reasons that people get out of this business is poor money management. And so I want to share with you um, an overview of um, correct money management in your business so that as you're making your money um, with your Mary Kay business that you can um, be running your business effectively and efficiently in this arena. What I have found with money management is if when you came into Mary Kay, if you had good money management habits, you will have naturally good money management habits with your business. You may just have to learn a few, you know, tips that are different between being a consumer and being an entrepreneur. If you had poor money management habits, like I did prior to coming into Mary Kay, I've had to learn the hard way through my Mary Kay business. A couple of things that you're going to want to get familiar with with money management are 
um, ProPay, set up a ProPay account so you can process credit cards for your customers. Um, I suggest that you have a Mary Kay account that has um, like a free checking with a debit card. No limit on the debit card and it works like a MasterCard or Visa. Um, I'm assuming that you are at profit making level. Profit making level is 3600 in wholesale product. This is just a level that's been determined um, by us in the field that when you have 3600 of wholesale, you have enough to fill up 10 roll-up bags. You have enough to go through probably not all 30 faces. I, I think you'll agree by the time you get through 20 faces, you're already going to have run out of something. Um, a 3600 wholesale, I feel like, is equivalent to about an 18 or 2400 when I started because we have so many items now that are more expensive. You know, when I started, we didn't have any $50 items. We have lots of $50 items in our line now. And 3600 was still profit-making level back in the day, 23 years ago. So it really is worth like half because I don't remember how much the skincare was, but it wasn't $54 like it is now. We didn't have all these other um, extra um, products that were over $50. So 3600 is profit-making level for a part-time new consultant. If you've been in the business long, you know, long enough to have reorder business coming in, you may need more than 3600 because, you know, if you're selling $1,000 a month, um, you know, 500 is one-sixth almost of that inventory. I mean, you have to evaluate how you're using your time. Are you using your time running around and dropping off products and getting back together with people? Would your time not be better spent holding another skincare class. So at 3600 at that point in time, I encourage you to start to write yourself a paycheck. Prior to that, I would encourage you to reinvest your money back into your business. Obviously, everyone's financial situation is different. So you're going to be working with your director to customize the plan that's best for you. So I'm giving you the generic best possible scenario that you either start with 3600 or build up to that point as quick as possible and at that point in time then you start to write yourself a paycheck and if you find that the activity that you're doing in your business means that you run out of products more frequently than twice a month it means you need to reinvest some of your profit back into your business to build your business inventory up and that's a good place to be it means you're doing more business than you have inventory for um, my consultants and directors who do this and sell a um, thousand to two thousand plus a month they have six to ten to fifteen thousand wholesale on their shelf. We never start new consultants with that because obviously I don't know what direction your business is going to take. You know, some people have a lot of men's skincare customers. Some have none at all. Some have a ton of sunscreen customers. Some have none at all. So the 3600 is just 10 roll-up bags. That's it. <laughs> and all the other stuff that you may need, you know, eyeshadow colors that you sell a ton of, different foundation shades or formulas, um, you know, boutique lines, which would be sunscreens, men's, spa, fragrance etc. Those things are um, what we customize as you build your clientele. So um, prior to um, having 3,600 wholesale, all your sales, the wholesale and retail, would go into reordering inventory until you get to 3,600 wholesale. Okay, so let's say you're at 3,600 wholesale right now. What you do is all the money that you make from your Mary Kay business, you sell, let's say you sell $1,000. It goes into that Mary Kay account. Remember the Mary Kay account that I encourage you to set up, you know, with free checking and a debit card that has no limit, that works like a MasterCard or Visa. All the money goes into the Mary Kay account. And then you are going to, that Mary Kay account doesn't do very much. Like you don't need fancy checks on there. You don't need Mary Kay checks on there because the only check that's going to be written is to you. And you know what business you're in. So use your Mary Kay checks on your personal checking account that you're writing, you know, checks to the dry cleaners and at the grocery store, etc. Um, so all your money goes into your Mary Kay account. 60% stays in that account. So if you put $1,000 in, $600 stays in that account to reorder inventory to keep your inventory at the same level, to order Section 1 and Section 2 and sales tax. 
60%, you make 50% profit, but you're keeping an extra 10% in there to cover your sales tax and your sales aids. It means that your Section 2 should be no more than 5, 4 or 5% of your Section 1. If it's more, then you need to take some money out of your 40% account. So that will keep you ordering skinny on the Section 2 side. Also know that there's no such thing as the queen of Section 2. So you only need the sales aides to take you from order to order. You don't need to stock Section 2. Let the company stock Section 2 and demo from Section 1 products as much as possible. It has been proven, and that's why we demo from full-size products out of your showcase now versus we used to do it out of demonstrator tubes. People buy more from full-size products in the cosmetic business. That's why you see them demonstrate from full-size products at the cosmetic counters. That's just, you know, how consumers buy cosmetics. And so your um, Section 1, 2, and sales tax, that comes out of your 60% out of your Mary Kay account. That's why I'm suggesting that you have a MasterCard or Visa debit card because then when you go to place a Mary Kay order, you simply go online and you use that account to order your products. If you start at your business on a credit card or a line of credit, you don't continue ordering on that same line of credit. Um, once you get to 3600 you are ordering in direct proportion to what you're selling from your debit card. Um, I have seen people get in trouble multiple times by using that same credit card to reorder products and they don't stick with the 60% account to reorder. They just get a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and pretty soon your credit card has crept up to some astronomical levels. If that's the case, the place that you're at, and again, I've been there, then I would tell you to try and get that to a, the lowest interest possible credit and do not use that credit card for anything else. Have a monthly payment that you make from your 40% account. Your 60% still goes to order products. You don't want to, you know, if you start to use that 60% account to pay down debt or for anything other than reordering inventory, it's called embezzling. And in other companies, you get thrown in jail for embezzling. In Mary Kay, you're not, but you can embezzle your way out of the business, and that's not a fun place to be. What happens with that is you have no inventory, <laughs> you have a credit card or a line of credit um, that still do, and you have no inventory. People sometimes will tell you, oh, I, you know, I lost money in Mary Kay or didn't make any money. No, that's not true. You made money, but you spent the retail and wholesale. And so you embezzled your way out of your business. And so your next option is, if you want to continue with your Mary Kay business, you have to take out another line of credit or borrow more money or get another, you know, funds together to be able to invest in more inventory and then to be able to turn that over, reorder in direct proportion of what you're selling, and then from your profit, from your 40%, start to pay down not only the first line of credit, but now the second line of credit. So... If you can, you know, prevent that from happening, that is very great. Um, okay, so you have your 60% account that you've deposited, that you're um, reordering inventory from. The 40%. So if $1,000 went into that account, 600 stayed there to reorder inventory, Section 1, Section 2. The $400 you write yourself a paycheck for. Those are the only two things that happen out of your Mary Kay account. One, you order inventory. The other, you write yourself a paycheck. That's it. Those two things. So that's why, you know, get free checking with a debit card from your 40% paycheck. From there, you're going to repay your loan. You're going to do your PCP, Preferred Customer Program. That's where you pay for seminar, career conference, fall retreat, get your year in gear, your meeting fees, cotton balls, hair bands, office equipment, washcloths, copies, postage, mailing, tissue, income. So your 40% account is running your business and is your paycheck. Some people get at this point get a little bit, you know, uncomfortable, like, but if those are my business expenses, it should be coming out of my business account. This is your, these are your business expenses, and your business account is not your inventory account. Your inventory account just orders inventory. If you, from that 40% account, want to have another Mary Kay account that you pay your Mary Kay expenses out of, and then put your 
your income into your own personal checking account, that's absolutely fine. But your 60% account is not your business account. That's your inventory account. Businesses that run with inventory, like a clothing store, they'll have a business account and an inventory account. They're not slushing all those things together. Also, most businesses run with lines of credit on them. You just want to make sure that you're paying a reasonable um, interest rate and also, you know, every month it's being paid down. So if you have a line of credit that you bought your inventory on, you know, say your loan payment's $100 a month, and then you have your other expenses that you have in your Mary Kay business. So, you know, if you need more money because you're saying, okay, well, gosh, i got to make the mortgage payment this month. So every week I have to have an extra 250 So at the end of the month I have 1000 for my mortgage payment. If you need more, income, where do you get it from? You sell more. You sell more product. You don't take it from your inventory account. You don't embezzle from yourself. So some of you will set an amount that you need to sell a week by a star consultant level you want to reach or by a prize you want to win. And some will set that by the amount of income you need. I personally quit my job that I went to college for four years for <laughs> two weeks after I started my Mary Kay business. So I've paid bills with my Mary Kay business since I started my Mary Kay business. So I've always had a set amount of sales. You know, as a consultant, I had up on my refrigerator $650 in a piece of paper. And every sale I made, I subtracted. And I, I love that because... If I'd sell a mascara, you know, if I started at 650, you know, 637 to me seemed like so much less than 650. And then if I could get to 599, that seemed like so much less than 650. So I would subtract every day. Every time I was at the refrigerator, I could see that number decreasing. And I'd know, you know, if I needed to work more or not, because I had to sell 650 a week not only to be on Queen's Court of Sales, because that was my 60-40 split, but I needed it to pay bills. And so, you know, I remember doing skincare classes and paying an electric bill, doing skincare classes and buying groceries. But I also, I love that. And that built such confidence in me and in this opportunity. No one can tell me that you can't make money in Mary Kay and that it's more secure working for someone else because I for 23 years have paid bills with my Mary Kay business and when we need more money I invest my time in my Mary Kay business to earn more